Torture. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a special interview episode from MediaMonarchy.com. My name is James Evan Pilato, your host and webmaster of the site and show Media Monarchy. And it's December 15th, and we are broadcasting and recording live from the Portland Radio Authority, PRARadio.org. And we are joined live and in person by Morgan Lesko of WikiWorldOrder.com. Morgan, thank you for taking the time while you're here in Portland. My pleasure, James. So we're going to get into why you're here. (laughs) But, But first, and actually you and I just met just for the first time only a few minutes ago. So let's kind of tell folks a little bit about your website and how you and I got connected to be here right now, December 15th, 2011. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, thank you so much. It, it's uh, a pleasure and an honor to meet you uh, as one of my alternative media heroes in, ah. the, in the Tragedy and Hope uh, sort of uh, network. Um, I started uh, Wiki World Order, uh, I guess, a year or two ago, and I started more as a blog and, and a way to document and fully explain my positions on on uh, any any of these uh, controversial topics that we like to investigate. And I thought of it as a way just to share with my friends and family, if no one else, um, and and to sort of prove my points, you know, document and prove it to my friends and family, because I you know I consider all of them to be very rational people, and mm-hmm. <laughs> and mm-hmm. so it started as that, and uh, then I realized that you know I was spending like hundreds or dozens if not hundreds of hours studying some of these topics and I thought you know not everybody's gonna read you know a five-page essay that I've written <laughs> uh-huh. so I started doing some video <laughs> turning them into videos and uh, <laughs> I can sympathize I can empathize <laughs> and um, I, I've always loved film it's always been one of my favorite art forms and I've, I've done you know a little bit of Photoshop over the years as a web developer um, but it's never been, you know, a marketable skill for me or, or, or something mm-hmm. I've had a consistent outlet for. But it's been so fun just learning and teaching myself and, and playing Absolutely. with the tools. And that was always that for me. And I think especially now, in a way, with all these kind of free tools at our fingertips, in a way, it's sort of it's almost foolish to not have yeah. something out there to to sort of parse and kind of share mm-hmm. information. And I know I've said on the show before that before the website... I was, you know, I, I spent time, you know, on doing stuff on Wikipedia and mm-hmm. other kind of things on the web, but it was really once I started the website, it was like, oh, <laughs> this is what I've been looking for in the internet, you know, all this time. Yeah. And I've, you know, pretty much <laughs> never, never looked back. <laughs> so what will folks find if they go to wikiworldorder.com? So, uh, yeah, about half of my content um, up till uh, the start of Occupy was, was mm-hmm. mostly sort of... Uh, an episode about a topic that I find highly important and, and trying to frame it in ways that, you know, trying to really bridge the mainstream. I originally thought of it sort of as trying to bridge Alex Jones and, and Re- Rachel Maddow, you know, trying, uh-huh. to, uh-huh. trying to collect the audience in between that set and, and, and find the common ground. And, and that's, yeah, because that's in a way, it's like those two sets. It's like, well, that's my neighbor and, you know, and someone else, you know, maybe a friend. And yeah. those things, to, yeah, are, are closer than we think they are. Yeah. So I, I so a lot of the the early episodes are more on that and uh, and it's sort of you know I hope in, in my long term goals I think are, are more to get into like feature length documentaries and stuff but I'm still just learning and, mm-hmm. and trying to get like a sort of a baseline understanding amongst my family and friends if no one else uh-huh. of like where I'm coming from and you're and the YouTube it's youtube.com slash yes. wiki world order yes, yes. and I've noticed you you've got you've got the longer video ability how did yes what's the secret to that i don't know i was mind blown uh it, it happened like a month ago and and it, it was just <laughs> it happened so fast i couldn't believe it maybe like i rejected advertising from the start i don't know if that helps or hurts but, uh-huh. but yeah yeah i i think at this point yeah i've been waiting for the for the youtube gods to bestow the director's account i don't think I, it's gonna I happen i don't know why i, I wonder maybe maybe with mine you know, I do. I have a bunch of other just straight news videos, mm-hmm. and you know, a dozen or so of those are sort of flagged. You know, YouTube mm-hmm. knows what they are, mm-hmm. but they haven't been pulled. It just has mm-hmm. that flag mm-hmm. that says, "Oh, this actually belongs to you know the New York Daily Post or, yeah. or whatever." Yeah. But I wonder if having just having any of those flags yeah. for so long on an, yeah. on an account, maybe, I maybe. See what you mean. Yeah. But then with somebody I've got a like couple, but Corbett Report, music, but. <laughs> someone like him, yeah. you know, tens yeah. of thousands of yeah. subscribers, and yeah. no, you know, no. <laughs> 
that director's account. So sorry, I, I had to I had to sidebar and, and rant about that. I have kind been of curious mystery <laughs> of, of YouTube. It's made it's made the process a lot easier. I've been able to upload a lot more uncut stuff from Occupy. Yeah, and it's just made a lot a lot of my process smoother. But yeah, I have no idea. It, it was very sudden. <laughs> one day, I was I uploaded one small video and said, "Oh, you've now been upgraded," and I was like, "Really? Damn! What did I do?" Huh. Um, well, and, and we mentioned our, our good friend, James Corbett of CorbettReport.com. How did you guys connect up? And I know you guys have at least have talked it at least once. Yes, that, that, it's just been the one so okay. far. And uh, I guess I, my progression was sort of, you know, starting from more of the Alex Jones realm and desperately looking for some similar understanding, different voice, different, you know, perspective. And, and I, I found Corbett through the Daniel Estelin video from Bilderberg a couple of years okay. ago that, that Alex had to run because mm-hmm. Corbett got it uh-huh. exclusive. Uh-huh. And, and ever since then, I, I caught on to Corbett, and then that's how I found you. And then I, I finally found Tragedy and Hope and, and Richard okay. Grove like a year, year and a half ago. And I've been catching up with okay. all his work. Um, and I th- yeah, and I think probably with, with a lot of us, so much of it just kind of starts with an email. Yeah. Just kind of saying, hey, yeah. you know, dig your site or dig your yeah. show, keep it up. Yeah. You know, nothing, nothing, exactly. you know, beyond that. And I think exactly. that's how things, you know, can just kind of naturally grow. Precisely. I pretty much like email you and him every time I post something notable, you know. Uh-huh. And, and, and after a while, you wanted to interview me about Occupy. So Sweet. So... Speaking of, you know, we were kind of talking about, you know, just kind of episodes and things on on Wiki World Order. And you even said it yourself, you know, until or before Occupy. Yeah, yeah. So, was it, you know, maybe that's going to be one of those yeah, before yeah. And, and after kind of events. And we are, we were discussing off mic just a few moments ago. I think, you know, we haven't looked it up, but I think we're just a, a day or so away from what will be the third month mm-hmm. anniversary of Occupy. So... Tell folks exactly, maybe, you know, how your involvement sure. in that start going back to September sure. 16th, 17th. Sure. Uh, well, when it first started, I, I was fresh back from Burning Man, and <laughs> okay. I, I, fa- I failed to do my project there. I was hoping to interview burners on the street and ask them what solutions they're most excited about for the default world. But <laughs> I, nice. you know, I was very excited um, just to see all the energy happening. Um, and it wasn't really until it started, you know, the Occupy Together really started that I got more actively involved. Um, and once, uh, so the first day of Occupy Sacramento on uh, uh, October 6th. Okay, and that's, I believe, when we were launched in Portland okay. as well. So okay, that was cool. probably, I mean, that was probably two weeks yeah. from the beginning. Yeah. So that yeah. October 6th was probably the day for a lot of places, yeah. both nationally and internationally. But sorry, go ahead. No worries. So I went there with the sort of impre- like the idea of you know totally embracing that like there you know mo- no media has non bias you know all media is biased mm-hmm. like I'm gonna go actively participate actively be actively act as citizen media and I went there and I took tons of footage loved it saw some great like minds just giving stump speeches off the cuff about the Federal Reserve and I felt that there was like this great expert and there was even a stop the 9-11 cover-up sign there even uh-huh. though it was totally off topic mm-hmm. and, or you know relatively <laughs> and and I, I felt I felt enough kindred spirits and, and enough potential for this like real alternative analysis to be heard there and and the amount of the amount of face-to-face discussions that we had that are just so good like mm-hmm. talking with a couple other people about 9-11 stuff to people who hadn't considered it before but the openness and and the level of uh openness to consider it was so much different yeah i'm sure they've mm-hmm. stumbled upon these same arguments online but never face to face eye to eye and it, there's something about that so powerful and that yeah you're right because there were in in my own conversations here on on the 6th of October and I I went and kind of made a recording and and played kind of a a condensed version of that on the show but yeah I had conversations with you know folks about everything from you know economy war food Illuminati Mm -hmm. you know it was pretty Mm much I I saw a little bit of of everything yeah so that maybe is is yeah that's a great upside to this is that all those kind of things are open as opposed to it if had it just been a straight you know anti-war march mm-hmm. you probably wouldn't mm-hmm. have been talking about gmos or the yeah. federal reserve yeah you should have but <laughs> you probably wouldn't have <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that that first day i was you know I, I even though i live in davis um you know i've lived like four out of the last six years in Ca- california as a whole so sacramento sort of made sense for me uh-huh. and, 
Um, and, and that night I went home, started editing the footage, and I, I saw on live stream the first arrest happening that night. And I was just, A, mind blown and enthused that they were live streaming this. And, uh -huh. you know, it was so, it was organized to that degree, at least. That Is it uh, Occupy, or maybe it's Occupy Stream? Dot org, though there's sort of a site set up where you go oh, to it really? and you basically just click oh, the city or the place wow. that you want to see, and the and it was just, so much sense. Like, wow, that was you know, <laughs> yeah. and you know, done in a pretty quick, yeah. you know, timely fashion. I'll I'll provide the correct link for folks out there. <laughs> yeah, but this crowdsourcing is, is just amazing. And is Davis the scene of what we now is pepper spray cop? Yes. That, okay. Well, well. The, at that point, I think the the Davis occupation, which is separate from the UC Davis occupation, okay. which is a little tricky and weird in my opinion, but um, the the Davis occupation started up like the next day, like October seventh, I think. Okay. Um, and and I, I that's where I probably should have been, you know, following Occupy rules or something, you know. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> but um, and, and then the UC Davis didn't start up till last month. Like uh, November's, it, like the day before the pepper spray or, okay. or, or something like that. Um, so, but I, I really fell in love with the, the Sacramento scene after just like being connected to that day, seeing the rest of that night live, you know, mm -hmm. in, in, in the similar way that li live media can impact and like that shared emotion can reverberate uh -huh. uh, and, and resonate. Um, now so, you're you're yeah. original you're originally from Maryland. Yeah, I was born in D.C. Uh, Washington D.C. Okay, and well, I, I don't know how I feel about that. The, you know, given yeah, the, dis <laughs> the district the of criminals we call it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I moved. We moved to the Maryland Burbs in second grade for me, and okay. then I went to University of Maryland, also ten minutes outside of D.C. Okay, so I never really left until after undergrad. Do you see any good shows there? Oh, yeah, I, yeah, I did. <laughs> I had a lot of fun. I, okay. I saw the most shot shows uh, there than any other place. I maybe saw, yeah, I maybe saw a couple a couple things. There. It was like the UMBC, <laughs> the Field House, some, yeah, something yeah. like that. <laughs> but uh, going back, I'm sorry, going back no to, uh, to October 6th, maybe mm -hmm. from, from mm -hmm. there to here, mm -hmm. as things, it, I guess there's been kind of an, an ebb and flow mm -hmm. of, I guess, a activity and actions and even just news coverage mm -hmm. of the Occupy movement, mm -hmm. you know, at large. As we hit the, I guess, the three month anniversary, you know, where does it, where does it go from here, I guess? Yeah. Uh, well, at least in, well, Sacramento has been, uh, a, I don't know how unique a case, I assume there's other cities like this, but from this first day, we've never had an overnight camping there. That has never been allowed, okay. and we've always been shut down. And for you know a lack of wanting to lose our property and a lack of resources, we pack it all up the hour before the curfew starts, which is an extended curfew by the city, but it's still a curfew okay. in our public park when we're trying uh -huh. to you know peaceably assemble mm -hmm. and redress the government for our grievances. Uh -huh. You know, um, so we pack it all up and and you know more symbolically sit in the park after curfew and get arrested. So the third night of Occupy Sacramento, I. I participated in that and I got arrested with about 20 other people and it was very peaceful mm -hmm. um, and we've, we've had great rapport with the cops and uh, trying to emphasize you know we've got nothing against mm -hmm. you we're here trying to fight for you and th this final time I got arrested just last week I, I really took more time like before getting arrested in the in the intermediate time like sitting down before getting arrested to really emphasize to them you have a choice you know uh -huh. don't follow the orders uh -huh. come and sit in solidarity mm -hmm. with us like we are you please mm -hmm. please don't do this you know um but you know so so we we've tried to understand that we know they have a choice and they're not choosing the right thing but we're not all we're also not their enemies like uh -huh. that's not how uh -huh. we win you know we need them on our team and it it seemed like here in Portland, the mayor was able to kind of play it well in a way to mm. sort of he gave, you know, the two parks oh. and it went kind of smoothly up until the point when, you know, the crackdowns yeah, kind of yeah, came yeah. back, which I guess was maybe the second week of, of November. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But he was able to sort of maintain, sort you know, the good <laughs> face. Yeah. Yeah. All the while, it still did end up getting shut down, and yeah. I think he kind of, you know, it emerged kind of unscathed, <laughs> maybe from yeah. from a lot of it. Mm -hmm. So I think that was interesting the way that that kind of, you know, played out, mm -hmm. played out here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but 
the strategy in Sacramento seems to have worked uh, to a degree in the short term uh, because we haven't been able to camp there, especially me being from Davis, people who work day, like double day shifts and can only be there at night but want to uh-huh. can't be there because we're not there and we don't have that continuous presence. Ability, yeah, to be. So it's really hurt our overall numbers in the short term. Mm. But, but, you know, this we all came together sort of in this national, you know, like – urgent feeling of urgency about how unrepresented we are on the national level and then and then our city starts arresting us for peaceful protest you know peaceful demonstrations in a public park Mm -hmm. and and you know the the county wouldn't even prosecute those charges and the city decided to keep prosecuting them and uh so it, it was amazing coming there to be you know, ask for more representation on the national level, and then being outraged at the local level, you know, where we thought we'd have uh-huh. the most control. So there were actions, I guess, in the past week dealing with the ports of yes. cities, yes. and I know not only here in Portland, yes. but there were also others. And uh, what do you know about those? Um, only a limited amount. We we had talked about uh, in in Sacramento and Davis. We had discussed you know going to Oakland and helping out with the um, the port shutdown there. But my understanding was it was happening most of most of the West Coast. Okay. And we had even um, talked a little bit about trying to shut down the port at West Sacramento, um, but that it didn't play out. And I think it's probably good. Probably given, for the best. Yeah. Because is that something that uh, I know at least here in Portland it was something that you know, sort of local businesses were mm-hmm. stopped from doing, mm-hmm. you know, their thing, even mm-hmm. though their thing, I think, was, you know, shipping feed to China mm-hmm. or something like that. Mm-hmm. But then maybe something like that, maybe, you know, loses yeah. folks that yeah. that would and, and are, you know, sort of on the side of, of Occupy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I have mixed feelings about it. One of the ways, one of the directions forward that I see, going back to your, your question, is... You know, I guess in, in my opinion, I, I keep thinking about Argentina, you know, a decade or two ago uh-huh. and then pots and pans in the streets, ma- you know, complete general strikes and, and democratic takeovers mm-hmm. of businesses. And, and so I guess I sort of see that as, as some aspect of inevitability. In, in, in such a movement. Um, hmm. I've, I've been thinking more about, you know, Occupy IBM, Occupy Google, you know, like trying to both encourage, uh-huh. like, consumers to pressure and employees to take over. Or and something that, that. You know, and that was the thing about the entire Occupy movement is that it does lend itself to, you know, Occupy blank. Yeah. That yeah. it's sort of like, you know, Occupy the thing, you know, mm-hmm. most I- important to you or the thing closest to you mm-hmm. or, the th- mm-hmm. you know, something that you can take, mm-hmm. you know, action with. Mm-hmm. That in a way, it's maybe it's sort of you know like nine eleven truth or you know economic truth or you know <laughs> sort of occupy those, mm-hmm. those issues. Yeah. So you you know you said you had your second arrest <laughs> last week. A well, third third arrest. Third. <laughs> yeah, the first two were in October uh, on the third and fourteenth nights, and and those charges actually just got dropped on Monday. Um, I've been going okay. to, to court periodically, and they got dropped Monday, and like an hour before my flight to Portland left. And <laughs> that's okay. That's what I was going to say. These, <laughs> yeah. these were the things that were were going to thwart you from yes. from coming out here. Yes, I was supposed to be in court for my the start of my trial on Tuesday morning, so I, I couldn't. I had to, I was planning to just cancel this trip. There was a deal offered a few weeks ago for like a hundred dollar administrative fee, and they would drop the charges. Huh. And, it was like a hundred seventy dollar round trip ticket, so I was like, "No, you know, I, I gotta yeah. stand with principle." And and I, it, it's just like too too important an opportunity, like too important a time. You know, I'd find a way mm-hmm. back out here if it wasn't this week. But I'm really glad it all played out. And <laughs> and you and you've been here for most of the week. Uh, I got here Monday night. Okay, and then you're and are you going back to Davis? Back to Friday. Davis Friday morning, Tomorrow, which is yeah, yeah, tomorrow. tomorrow. <laughs> it was a super quickie. I need to come out and live here for a few months. <laughs> That's what really That's, needs to happen. But well, like like the show Portlandia says, it's where young people come to retire. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know some some of my friends I know I have have been active here in Occupy Portland mm-hmm. uh, and and have done pieces on that for for some of the sites and things. But I guess yeah, as as we start to you know the, the year wraps up and even you know I got in the issue of spin that's mm-hmm. you know the year and best with you know mm-hmm. the forty best albums and songs and blah blah blah. But it's pretty much prefaced by, you know, an Occupy essay yeah. and how it sort of maybe influenced or is affected by or had an effect on, 
you know, the music and the and the media mm-hmm. that they discuss. And mm-hmm. So I guess it just it seems like, in a way, at the end of the year that you sort of put all those things away and you sort of go, oh, okay, we'll look back, you know, on the year past and kind of wash <laughs> our hands and wipe our hands of it. <laughs> but it's only going to yeah. continue to escalate. And we're having, you know, the all the hullabaloo about ending the Iraq war Mm -hmm. as, you know, Obama gets to run around like he has something to do with it and take the, you know, the accolades. Exactly. His his mission accomplished (laughs) moment. So now we're going to have, you know, tens of thousands soldiers, you know, coming back here who probably will have, you know, PTSD and other issues. I guess I wonder when, you know, in a way they may all come back and they may all join (laughs) Occupy. Sure hope so. <laughs> as, you know, as the jobs and everything starts to fall apart. I guess I'd like to think, as you were kind of talking about, you know, the way you, you would address, you know, the police and to know that, you know, we're not enemies of each other. And I've said it on the show, I guess I, I'd like to think that if and when, you know, it hits the fan and yeah. it's one of those almost a Katrina kind of moment mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that in a way you think it's like, man, those dudes are going to go take care of their family. Yeah. You know, they're probably not going to be out here cracking down they're gonna go check yeah. on their wife and kids or their mom or you know elderly yeah, and any of that kind really of stuff true. yeah and in a way you know that does make them more mm-hmm. of us mm-hmm. you know just just mm-hmm. like you said what's what do you do you see anything you know for the not too distant future and for 2012 well i mean i can't i can't really i haven't been able i've had trouble <laughs> trying to stop being nervous um and and quite frankly your voice and uh, especially is is really helpful for me and to, to you know to, to point out this the scarier tidbits of news that uh-huh. we do need to be alert <clears throat> excuse me alert about but try not to be alarmed I think is mm-hmm. a very important nuance that you uh, you managed to tackle very well thank you um, so I am I am very concerned um, you know about the what is it the National Defense Reauthorization uh-huh. Act uh-huh. Uh, you know th- this kind of stuff is I, I could I can feel the the narrative playing out, and and so far in Occupy, all the narratives have felt very logical to me. Like I, I'm impressed with the uniqueness of, of the Occupy lack of message and and, uh-huh. and this kind of feel, but but the like reaction in the police, and then the reaction by the uh, public to the police, and and this back and forth seems very predictable to me. Therefore, I feel it must be predictable to them. You know, our 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 one percent, the big know, or, yeah. or the, the big them, yeah, the, <laughs> the, the tenth they. of a percent, or whatever it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the they. Um, so I am I am getting pretty nervous about that. But you know, people are waking up too, and people are waking up faster than ever. And I, I've been feeling that. Um, my my parents, you know, when I started you know coming out to them about this kind of stuff three four years ago as i started my blog and just needing to mm-hmm. like like you know a- after obama was, got elected and, you know the first night was sort of like so, some kind of good feeling but as soon as he started appointing and everybody uh-huh. I, I lost all the hope immediately so mm-hmm. um and and i had to get vocal so they've been starting to finally come around every every couple months in the last two years they've been saying Oh crap! Morgan is right. You know, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> you know those seeds That's, are starting to grow. Yeah, da- I know. As far as yeah, friends and and family who I've been you know talking about these things you know now going back to you know two thousand three and four mm-hmm. that definitely they're like oh he's been talking yeah he did say something <laughs> he's been talking about this for a long time. <laughs> Unfortunately, you know, so many folks. It depends on which side of the yeah, spectrum they're yeah. on that, like you said, Obama comes in and now they're like, oh, wait, this, oh, God, this is all messed up. <laughs> like, as if it all just started on, yeah, yeah, on yeah. January 20th or not. <laughs> Do you, I mean, the Ron Paul question. It's very interesting. Yeah, because to me, it's like, well, obviously, out of any of the people up there, he's the best. Yeah. But still, it's still in the game, you know. I, I think I did see a headline that said, you know, he he would not rule out a third party mm-hmm. run. Interesting. And I think folks like, or specifically, Jesse Ventura said, you know, hey, I you know I'd be Ron Paul's running mate in a heartbeat, just not on the major got it party. Got it. Oh, you know, cool. if, he, if he ran independent, cool. he'd said he would, you know, he would totally do it. Cool. But would even in a way would would bringing in something like that would that just sort of hasten the agenda in a way that much faster? I I I'm having trouble. I you know I'm just starting to sort of process and visualize these 
these potentials mm-hmm. um, but I could definitely I could definitely feel it um, being used against us I, I just don't know what won't at this point that's this, this, that's the yeah. thing that it kind of seems it's a pretty much a rigged game yeah, and it's only yeah. a matter of like okay well how much longer are they yeah. gonna keep the lights on yeah I, I guess I'm I'm having more and more hope in, in, in whatever the occupy, occupy um, movement manifests itself as next, you know, the whatever the 2.0 version. I, I know, mm-hmm. at least in Sacramento and Davis, we're talking about, you know, trying to find people whose homes are about to be foreclosed on and trying to help them occupy yeah. those. And, and, and I think that'll, we'll see sort of those kind of trends around the country of people finding ways to take both direct, act, direct action and attain warmth while maintaining this movement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because we still need food and shelter. And yeah. that's pretty much what, it, you know, occupy, you know. Yeah. It's all in the language in there. Yeah. But we've seen, I think, you know, I think I even saw Occupy 2.0 in a, a religious news head. You know, it's mm. like, you know, clergy and churches get mm. involved in, in Occupy. Ooh, interesting. And also, you know, and also, you know, farmer, urban farmer, mm-hmm. you know, students and things a, cool. as well. And actually, I've got a story on Food World Order about that right now. And I think that's coming straight out of the, the original, yeah. you know, in, in New York near Sukati Park. Got it, got it. Yeah, in a way, I guess, you know, like I said, you always want to just kind of wrap up the year as if you can just sort of, oh, okay, it's done, and kind of put it away. And I always, yeah, think about, oh, I'll do a big, you know, year-end show. Mm-hmm. Just like, oh, God, there's no way I can do that. I can't fit all that stuff in. And most of these things aren't, you know, cut and dry yeah. situations. Not a bit. You know, anyway, they're all just, you know, sure, you know, the calendar and the page is going to flip, but all these things are still going to continue. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I guess, I, you know, I'd like to think here in Portland we've, uh, you know, maybe are in a good spot if and when things get much, much worse. Mm-hmm. But then on the other side, I feel like I can look around and go, oh, God, you know, everybody's still, you know, here will go just as nuts as yeah. people in other, yeah. you know, kind of metropolitan, yeah. you know, city kind of areas. I so I don't know. I th- yeah, Davis, I think yeah. it's it's mostly, you know, I think it's, like you said, you know, for, forewarned is forearmed. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. when things start to happen, mm-hmm. you, miss, you know, don't necessarily start to freak out and yeah. you can and you can make rational moves well said. Yeah. but who knows yeah that's the thing There's wh- <laughs> whatever next big sort of accelerant kind of move mm-hmm. that may come mm-hmm. it's hard to ever really know what that is going to be or yeah. when that's going to be yeah. and we do and i know i do it myself you know we talk about speculations about dates and drills and things mm-hmm. in the sky mm-hmm. and all those sort of events but those usually never pan out yeah. Yeah. and the things that do happen on those events are a 180 degree from what you were sort of looking at it was like oh that you know that day ended up you know having something happen but I, it was behind me i was looking at this other thing so the prediction game is usually yeah. pretty dicey pretty kind of operation but yeah i mean it seems like things are getting worse but i don't want to give in to that yeah yeah and and i think there there is a lot of hope in in occupy no matter i i I still am of the opinion after a few weeks i started trying to look for like what i would consider a win what i would consider a loss for the movement like if we accomplish some reform on the national level Mm -hmm. that's sort of like attributed to us but it's you know not going to really fix any root problems you know how upset would it be campaign finance reform and ending the fed like you know th- those are two kind of key issues that i would think of as like sizable mm-hmm. important wins that that would you know not not totally change the whole system but mm-hmm. an important key steps that are revolution worthy kind of uh and know, that could be the sort of like not you know notch notch exactly. on the belt of of occupies exactly to kind of, exactly to be able to mark down yeah achievements right so i, I considered those wins and I considered, you know, like a violent, you know, crackdown martial law. That's all loss, of course. And mm-hmm. and then I and I came up with another win, which I I thought was maybe the best. Is just like this doesn't end. You know, we don't have any attributable wins, so nobody can really pin us down. And, and, uh-huh. the, and the ideas and the spirit lives on as other manifestations. And we just keep meeting and and you know building those communities that that a lot of us talk about. Mm-hmm. That we want to, you know, we want to have more neighborhood, like more knowing your neighbor, more community help you know and and uh so I, I feel like this is sort of responding to that need in, in within us uh, throughout the country and i think it'll keep going and and i think it's been our best shot so far of trying to 
really model and out, out outgrowing of the the system we find uh-huh. so repugnant. Mm-hmm. And that's I mean it does really kind of come down to you know your your neighborhood, your neighbors, yeah. your block, yeah. you know any of those kind of things. Yeah. And I you know and I know some of them, but not nearly as well, right. and not nearly as well if at some point you're having to you know go for help or you know any yeah. of those kind of things. Yeah. Ah, jeez. How, yep. <laughs> how do we how do we st- steer this plane back up and 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 blast off on a on a more optimistic note? I'm trying not to be the, the downer here. Well, you know, I I I see it just as as that. You know, the the Occupy movement for all its faults and and weaknesses and. And um, you know, sort of lack of direction and <laughs> makeshift organization. It's it's very burner in my opinion. By uh-huh. the way, uh, uh-huh. it, it's it's pretty exciting. A lot of the sort of core burner tenants I, I see enacted just radical self-expression, radical inclusion. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, and and then all the just building stuff. And I say, hey, how can I help? How can I help make make all this work more smoothly? And people just learning the tricks. Um, that autodidact, uh, autodidactic mindset uh-huh. is so important. So I, I feel like it. I feel like it's working. You know, I think it. I think there's more people than ever that are that are active, that are consciously thinking about things. Even if we're still not on the mark, you know, we still don't have everybody asking the real questions uh-huh. behind a lot of these issues. They're at least active, and and that's something we haven't seen in my lifetime. And right? that's what. This big new Brzezinski has yes. sort of warned yes. people saying there's this huge yes. political awakening going yeah. on. He said that, you know, months and months and months before yeah. anything like Occupy. And that has that has been the thing. I, I have seen it said in, in many other places that regardless of the ups or downs or pros or cons of any of those things about Occupy, it has generated political awareness in in masses of people. Yeah. And in a way, maybe like you said, you know, maybe it doesn't have to keep crescendoing to mm-hmm. something mm-hmm. or be completely smashed out like you said you know one one mm-hmm. degree or the other mm-hmm. that it would just kind of continue yeah. to go and the name and the mm-hmm. ideals will still kind of continue to go on so as yeah. you were even saying it just thinking of you know you walked in the street and go oh there's oh, okay the occupy garden <laughs> in my neighborhood oh that's yeah, yeah that's been going for a while yeah, now yeah. that kind mm-hmm. of thing would yeah. be the lasting exactly yeah so i think there's plenty of hope for that and then and, and plenty of room for people to shoot for that so as we kind of wrap it up here, any any last words for folks or, or where they should go or how to find you or um, get not, in, ways to get in touch? Yeah, uh, well, uh, wikiworldorder.com or, or .org. I, I finally uh, expanding to that uh-huh. <laughs> uh, domain extension too. But there's a contact form there on the site you can use to contact me. And, and also part of the concept of Wiki World Order, I realized like after rolling, I love the phrase Wiki World Order as soon as I came up with it. I like it. At, at some <laughs> anti 9 uh, uh, 11 truth uh, rally I was at. Um, you know, I, I want something that describes my enemy and describes my solution because I want to be solution focused, you know. Uh, and uh, But I realized that I need to make it collaborative and inclusive also. If you know, I wanted to ha- hold that wiki, wiki. you know. Uh, core uh so i i've always encouraged people to make their own media Uh and share it with me i'll repost it on wiki world order and it can be sort of just a collaborative reporting environment you know where as long as it's positive you know like not not too negative no violence Mm -hmm. and uh and and some focus on solutions i'll repost it so uh, awesome media welcome (laughs) <laughs> that's yeah i mean and that's ultimately yeah what it has to all be about this sort of arms arms wide open morgan lesko wikiworldorder.com thanks so much for for coming here and coming to the studios and and just this you know brief chance that we have to meet and then we can take this and and hopefully you know keep it keep it going like yeah. you just said on, on all those other levels yeah. so i i appreciate it man well thank you so much james for all that you do and and squeezing me in your schedule today thank you thank you <laughs> All right, folks, it's December 15th, 2011. My name's James Evan Pilato, your host and webmaster of the site and show at MediaMonarchy.com. This has been another special interview episode, and our live show will be coming up tomorrow, episode 243. We may play a little snippet of this within there, but keep an eye out for this and all the other alternative media coming out of MediaMonarchy.com. So as always, my friends, we remind you, don't hate the media, become the media. Take care. (laughs) 